Welcome to the Community Enrichment Fitness Network's Focus on Fitness, where making healthy choices creates healthy lifestyles. I'm Reverend Jesse Brown, your host, and on behalf of Sherry Hill and the CEFN family, welcome to the show. We have had a wonderful time with Dr. Brett Cordonic and Cordonic Associates, or chiropractic, I should say and the Mount Airy area of Philadelphia. He has been giving us some great information and today we're gonna to talk about, you know, the population base that uh, psych uh, psyche, uh, chiropractic work ought to be done and how old you have to be, all that kind of thing. I think most people think of it as kind of, you know, old folks stuff right. uh, a lot of times. Right, which is a shame because by the time we've reached that point, many things that could have been prevented or helped have been lost already. Um, the youngest patient in my office that was not a family member was seven days, uh, a newborn, and the mother brought the child in just to be checked. Mm -hmm. And what's great is that infants and children get wonderful results uh, with chiropractic for ear infections. Um, there have been many studies that show how it helps with that, how it helps with colic. Um, and with children, research has shown that the average child by the age of four has had 4,000 traumas whether they're done on purpose, where they bounce down the right. steps on their bottom, or they're just falling out of trees, or pretty much just playing around, they're gonna have traumas. And if you don't check the spine to make sure that things are, are correct, well then, something that happens when you're four years old becomes an issue when you're 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So earlier detection, the better. So, so that would be the youngest. Uh, as the oldest, I believe the oldest patient I have was in her 80s. Uh, very active woman and again no aches and pains wanted to make sure she could keep playing tennis and doing what she was doing checked her spine and we made sure that she was doing well so the whole gamut um, of, but of there ages are there. diseases that are specific to kind of specific groups I mean with children you do want to check for things like scoliosis am I pronouncing that correctly absolutely and other and things like that Sure, and with, with kids these days, certainly you want to check scoliosis, but a lot of times by the time they're getting checked in school, uh, elementary school, the scoliosis has already reached a point where it's going to be progressive. So you want to check them when they stand up, can you when they're figure that, can, you, can you see that happening very early on? If you're checking for subluxations and the individual movements of the vertebra of the spine, absolutely. And what would be the cure, the, the, the you know, how do, what would you do with that? Well, you would certainly do a chiropractic adjustment for the subluxation, posture training exercises, and then changing how they do things on a daily basis. Uh, and the biggest thing that we're coming up with children are the book bags. Um, those backpacks are so heavy, they're carrying four or five textbooks. Um, they're each an inch or two thick. And it's much too much weight to put on their back because when they have all that weight coming backwards, well, their head has to go forward so they don't tip over. Um, and then it's not cool always to have the backpack on both arms, so they're putting it on one arm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of those things need to be modified and changed. Um, I know that with my children when they were younger, it was, you didn't have a choice. The backpack went on both arms. Right. And if it was too heavy, you left the book at home. And we got you another book, one for school and one for home. Now, with uh, tweens and teens, you tend to be getting yourself into athletics and other things like that that require, you know, a great deal of coordination. And, but it also can lead to both injuries and if you're not doing things quite right when you're learning how to do these things. And I'm not talking about tumbling either, you know, some of the more difficult ones, but just doing things like, like playing basketball or playing volleyball or playing football as we do on the, on, on the thing. How, do, how does that work with, with kids? What, what are some of the things that they can come up with? Well, with teens, by the time they've reached the high school and, and certainly the college age, the teams, they all have the trainers. Um, all the professional teams and the college teams these days have chiropractors on staff. So they're very aware of uh, injury prevention and how to keep the body working as well as it can. For the younger kids, it's creating those good habits. So it's always about warming up before you play, mm -hmm. stretching beforehand, stretching afterwards, using good mechanics. Um, what a lot of times what children don't think about is that, well, I'm young, I can do whatever I want to do, and when I'm done, I just go on to something else. We have to stretch afterwards. We have to cool down afterwards. We really have to get those habits now so that when we're in our 30s and 40s and 50s and we're still doing these things, mm -hmm. that we, we've got a good foundation for how to, how to get well, by with that. Well, you know, that's something rather difficult to do to tell somebody that what's, what, what they're doing now at 15 is going to affect them when they're 35. I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> 
you know, and they also think, we're, and, and I'm one of those. I, I know that I grew up that way. We're invincible. You know, nothing's going to happen. I can handle it all. Uh, if you throw it at me, I can do that. Right. Um, but we can't overdo it. Even True. as a teenager or as a, uh, you know, we, and, we and, can do. And the wonder and the, the beautiful part of our bodies are they are designed to adapt and overcome just about anything um, with not slowing us down at all. And that is our greatest gift, but it's also our downfall because the body's still going to work while it's breaking down until you get that symptom and all of a sudden now you can't do it. Yep. Now what about the 20s and maybe even the 30s? Well, 20s and 30s, it's usually the compounding of what they were doing in their teens. So, you know, 10 years of texting or 10 years of working on a laptop, you get that forward head posture and you see people walking. It looks like their, their, their head is three, they're leaning, three, yeah. yeah, like they're in a rush to get somewhere because their head is so far forward. And that's the situation where, you know, now they're talking about neck pain and they're having headaches or they're getting pain into their shoulders or down their arms. Uh, even carpal tunnel syndrome, so mm -hmm. you know, from working on the computer all the time. So, again, going back to when they were teens, if you get those good habits and you bring in a couple of posture modifications, that is not something where they're going to spend 20 minutes a day doing exercise. We're talking two or three minutes to change that habit. Well, then again, you got to try to stop it, and then you got to learn that new habit to stop it from progressing. But you know, probably one of the key things to this is that usually when we're getting into our 20s and 30s, we are also into our job situation or right. family situation or both. And you may end up with a job where you're sitting at a desk. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't think about it when we start the process that being at that desk, the repetitiveness of doing some things or the inappropriateness of picking up something the wrong way was, would have an effect on us, but it does. Absolutely. And OSHA, the, the government group that tells you what kind of things you can do and can't do at work, says, you know, if you're at your desk for an hour, you better be getting up at least five minutes every hour to change your posture mm -hmm. um, because we've realized that years and years of doing these things has number one it's cut down on productivity so the businesses want you to change number two it's cut down on how your body works mm -hmm. so that you can't do what you want to do or do your job for as long um, and it's a big cost it's it's a physical cost it's a financial cost and and it's something that can be changed relatively easy mm -hmm the sooner you start with it. Now, and this may be on the extreme end, but I know that, uh, that there are some CEOs who don't have a desk at which they sit down at. They actually stand up at their desk. And for them, they feel like th this is a far better way for them to be able to do their work than it is to sit down at a desk. Absolutely, they're always moving. And uh, I'll tell you a secret, I have some patients who I have that have gotten exercise balls and they sit on those behind their desk instead of a chair because you got to keep moving to keep your body keep balanced. balanced. So, so it, anything that changes things around, that's what you really want to do. Okay, and then what about our seniors? Seniors, well, the, the biggest thing I see with seniors is they all have that forward head posture, and it looks like when they're walking around down the street that they're looking for loose change. Mm -hmm. Okay, their heads are so far forward, and for every inch your head is forward, that's pound, tens of tens, tens, 20 pounds of pressure exerted on the spine. So now, if they've had years of a bad diet, they've got um, osteoporosis, so the mm -hmm. bones are weak. They've got years and years of bad posture and muscle strain so, and gravity pulling on those joints. So there's certainly the potential for fractures, mm -hmm. but the quality of life that they're dealing with is something that really could have been changed or helped right. sooner. And this is for both men and women. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we tend to talk about women having those things, but men have those too. All you have to do is sit on a bench and you just watch people walking by and you'll see all, all wow. everybody looking, looking down like that. And Let it, me tell folks to go to our website at cefn.org. You can see more about Dr. Brett Cardonic and the work that he does and, uh, you know, find out what he, uh, you might want to visit him. So check out our website, cefn.org, and I'll see you in our exercise segment. All right. Susan Flynn has been doing wonderful things for my back. She's taught me the downward dog. Mm -hmm. See, I'm even learning new terms, but I know there's more to this than just what I've learned today. So why don't you tell us more about where you, uh, what you do and, and where you are? Okay, first thing is Mary Flynn, not oh, Susan oh. Flynn. <laughs> That's okay, but you remember downward Man, dog, so that I think you're, Isn't that an actress or something? <laughs> Susan Flynn Boyle or something? Right, yeah, right, there that's you go. One. 
Um, so, and I run a yoga studio called Mount Air Yoga, and mm -hmm. it's in Mount Air, and we teach Ashtanga Yoga. So, we're going to go over some of the benefits um, and the practices and the method of Ashtanga Yoga. Okay. All right. So, um, we're going to, I'm going to show you a few um, warm-ups and then a few poses to help uh, relax the nervous system and um, calm you, and uh, you're going to stay connected to your breath, which mm -hmm. is really important. And we use a breath called the Ujjaya breath, and it's, it's like, it sounds like an ocean. You close off the back of your throat, and it's like... It takes a little practice. There you go. Very good. There it is. Sometimes it, people, when they first do it, it sounds like... Right, like you're sniffing, but it's a little bit deeper in the throat. It's a very mm -hmm. calming breath. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, so why don't you come to the front of the mat? All right. All right. And uh, we're going to start with a little warm-up. So you're going to inhale, bring your arms up. Okay, stay here, look up, bring your palms together. So what you want to do here is engage your quadriceps, pull the belly in, roll your shoulders away from the ears, okay, and keep breathing. That's it. Then you're going to exhale as you fold over. Now, if you know Got that it. you have some problems, disc problems, herniations, or um, ruptures, or you want to actually keep your back from rounding, keep the back flat, mm -hmm. bend your knees, exhale, fold over. You can touch the floor with bent knees. Otherwise, if you want, you can, if you're, you know your back's okay, go all the way over. Okay. And then inhale, just prepare, look up a little bit. And then exhale, step all the way back to like a plank position. Take your palms to the floor and then drop your knees to the floor. Good. Take an inhale, look up, drop your belly. Very nice. We'll do cat cows. Exhale, round the back. Right? Warming up the spine. Okay. Good. Keep rolling. Inhale. And exhale. Okay. Now, um, he's going to come into a downward facing dog. So I want you to open up your fingers nice and wide mm -hmm. and take your hands a little bit wider. You want them about shoulder width. Right. That's it. And then lift your hips in the air. You might feel this in the hamstrings and look back to your navel. That's it. You reach the sits bones up to the ceiling and you're stretching. If you feel if it's too much on your shoulders, come right back down to the knees. That's fine. Right. And then you're going to bring your hands and feet together. So walk your feet forward or walk your hands back, however you need to do that. And hang over. Again, if you need to bend the knees, okay. bend the knees if that feels more comfortable for you. Inhale, come all the way up and bring your hands together into a prayer. That's it. And exhale, bring your hands down. Be the breath is beautiful, very good. So the breath can really help you to link the movement and create calm in your body. So um, you can do a few of those and then grab your waist and take your feet. Hold on, we're, gonna, we're moving into another <laughs> pose. This one's called Padangustasana. Okay. All right. And again, it's a forward bend. So you can bend the knees a little bit, reach down. You can grab the toes or just take your hands to the floor okay. and grab. Yeah. Actually, widen your feet a little bit. It'll make it a little more comfortable. Okay. And then drop your head and breathe here. Drop so the head down. My legs. Head down. Yeah, no, drop your head. There you go. Now, same thing. If you know that you have some herniations or some problems in the back, then bend the knees a lot and just go over. It's uh, good for the uh, quadriceps, and you're still going to get a stretch. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's okay, you stay and breathe. You'll soften a little bit. And then to bring your hands to your waist, and inhale, come up. Bring your feet together and hands to the sides. And again, sort of regroup here, right? Find your breath. Good. Okay, and the next pose we'll move into is a triangle pose. So come to the front of the mat again mm -hmm. and step your right foot back this way. Okay, there you go. And pivot the foot so you're facing, turn around so you're facing this way. That's it. Open your arms. I think you can go a little wider. All right, so the, where you want your feet, you want the heel somewhere around the, the back heel. So you can go a little bit railroad track this way, wider, this wider. way. This yeah. way? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
That'll give you more balance. Oh, and yeah. then face this way. Stretch the arms out. Good. Lift up from your belly. Pull the navel in. And exhale. Take the arm down and stretch the side of the body. Mm -hmm. Great. That's it. If it's a little too intense, you can bend that right knee. Okay? That'll help alleviate some. But this is a great stretch on the side. And you look up to the top hand. Fingers point up to the ceiling. That's it. Great. And use your breath to come up. Stay for five breaths or mm -hmm. ten breaths. Inhale, let your body lift. Inhale, lift up. Mm -hmm. Come back up. That's it. Mm -hmm. Pivot your feet. Let's do the other side. Okay. So what you want to do is exhale as you go over. Right. Mm -hmm. Stay for a few breaths. So he's bending a little bit, so that's fine, right? It's a modification. If he can, eventually as he warms up, he's going to straighten the leg. Look up to the top hand. And that actually, again, helps the thyroid, stretching the side of the body, mm -hmm. stretching the kidneys. And then inhale, stand up. And exhale, bring yourself back to the front of your mat. Hmm. Good. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> nice. Okay. So come back here. All right. So you want to come back, you regroup at the front of the mat. Very good. Feeling okay? I'm feeling fine. Okay, let's try a side angle. So you're going to okay. step out to the right again. This time you go a little wider in your stance. And turn your toes. Forward. Perfect. Okay. Bend this knee. Now you want the knee right over the ankle, not past the toes. So it can, there's a little leeway there, but you don't want that knee past the toes. Right. Rest your right hand on the top of the right thigh and swing this arm next to the ear. This is called side angle, palm down. Palm down. So you're stretching through the whole side of the body. Uh -huh. Very good. Breathe. So you always want to engage the abdominals. So you're pulling the lower belly in and you're breathing fully. You feel the back ribs expanding. And you can move from that lower belly. Inhale as you stand up. Pivot your feet and exhale, second side. Very nice. Bend okay. the knee. <clears throat> Again, the knee stays over the ankle. You can look up towards this top hand. Turn the palm down. The gaze is important, too, because it helps direct the energy. It certainly does. Great. Mm -hmm. And then again, use your abdominals and your breath to inhale, stand up. And exhale, come back to the front of your mat. All right. Okay. Very now this good. I could do all day, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's one of those things you don't have to, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, tense you right. that much. You, you're relaxing. Mm -hmm. Look, folks, try this at home. This is wonderful exercise. It is the kind of thing that helps you. It won't hurt you. You can even do it at work. So I hope you got something from it today. And we have with us today, he is dressed to impress, Chef Live Ive. All right. Uh, good to see you. Got Jenna. you back here again. I know that you do some wonderful things in the kitchen. You always have, and especially for us. And we're going to get to that. But I actually want folks to know why, uh, how you got involved with live food and, and, and raw foods. Yes, basically after a car accident, I needed to really heal and get strong and I was really already studying um, vegan living um, and it, it just really came down to instead of just studying you need to start practicing mm -hmm. so a point of like healing from a car accident and also really just knowing the increased energy and also working around toxic chemicals mm -hmm. I used to work at the National Institutes of Health as a health physicist so sometimes I would give um, uh, well, used to talk about different things, but also would be around high energy and, you know, was worried right. about my thyroid. So, you know, I knew that trace minerals from um, the seaweeds would basically help detox the body. So, you know, then I started okay. really putting things together and knowing how to detox, purify your blood. And we have some things here that do that. We have the ginger root, we right. have the uh, citric um, acids and 
the plantains are built there, and then I have herbs from my uh, garden, uh, right. lemon tarragon and parsley. Right. So we're going to make something that's very now creative. Look, you know, some of these things people are, it looks like a banana, but it's called a plantain. That's right. And, and this, is a, this is still a fruit, uh, or what would you call it? Fruit? Yes, basically it's a fruit, yes. Uh -huh. And it's, it's huge. The big but cousin of banana. That's big, okay, <laughs> and then we're going to have that. I know, you know, in a lot of African dishes, uh, plantain is one of the staples yes, in definitely. their diet, uh, diet process. And then, of course, you said this, you actually, the... Um, this came out of my, uh, your own garden. my yard, yes. Uh -huh. So people ought to consider uh, planting some of these things themselves. That's right. Are there other things? I mean, parsley is one I know that you can do yeah. in, a, in a pot or... You know, you can almost grow anything in a pot. Once you get the seed sprouted, <laughs> it's like, hey, it, it'll basically grow. You can do your tomatoes. You can basically do um, uh, onions, and we have scallions here. So, um, so you can have your own fresh uh, food garden, so to speak. Exactly. I mean, even a small one. It didn't have to be a big one. That's right. I mean, I, I know that some chefs have uh, uh, put in a, a planter in the window. Right. And they grow their parsley, and then when they're ready, they literally pull, pull the parsley right out, of, right out of that. But I suspect you could even do it with things like carrots and, and oh, things yes. of that nature. Am I correct? You're right. You're correct. And you don't have to have the big garden out in the yard that some people may not want to spend the time to deal with or to do, but that allows you to have some fresh vegetables to cook with right then, right there. And that's the best thing. Keep it fresh and you know it's locally grown, and you know when it's organic or not, because that's you have That's control. right, you yes. did it. Well, you know, the other thing I, I like about all the recipes you have uh, presented to us is that these things can be done fairly quickly. Oh, yes. These don't take a lot of time, and if you prepare ahead of time, as you can with plantains or with some of these things, you can uh, cut them, prepare them, freeze them, or put them away for a little while, that's right. and they're there for the week. That's right. That's so you can wake up in the morning and, you know, make whatever it is you want to make and take it with you. Yes. Well, let's get to the recipe for today and let's okay. see what we've got going here. What do you want me to do? I basically want you to um, cut all the lemons and the limes. Okay. And maybe even the tomatoes very Now, um, when you say cut them, you want me to... I need them to be juiced. So you can cut them and use this ringer right here to uh, get the gotcha. juice and pour over the plantain. All right. I have one more plantain that I want to uh, do. Let's, let's cut it in half and do it. I used to do it on the big juicer machine. Okay. So. And while you're doing that, I'm a great ginger because this recipe will have um, um, fresh juice, fresh ginger, the tarragon. We're going to have scallion tops, sun-dried tomatoes, and then we have different spices. I like to use um, Chinese five spice will go there. Everybody loves cinnamon. Cinnamon really is... Um, helps digestion and a lot of things, but this is called plant, a curry plantain. Curry will be the, the dominant ingredients, but really the sweetness will come from the plantain, and I also use, for trace mineral purposes, dulse, the seaweed. Okay. And then we top it off with um, a high-grade oil. So as you're doing the lemon juice, I'm going to start grating. You want lime, <clears throat> I presume? Lime, yes. Okay. Lime, lemon, we're going to put it all together. All right. And this fresh ginger will give it a nice little taste. One more plantain, I'm gonna get in there so we'll have enough to feed the studio. There you go. They always feel so neglected. Right, but we're gonna definitely give them, and a lot of people have never eating, uh, don't think about eating plantain raw. So we're gonna give them a treat. Um, we have a couple people from the islands and from the continent, oh, and yeah. they're really in for a treat because uh, <laughs> Okay, I need these herbs. Uh, okay. You know, you can Got fold them. them and, and then also those sun-dried tomatoes. So also, you know, these recipes will be posted, but I'm one that I'm not a slave to the recipe. If we can basically, if we have certain things one week and not the other week, there's variations on a thing. Mm -hmm. And some people may not even like curry. I have a friend that said curry always, like, made her feel some type of way. But for the most part, you can make this into a cinnamon or even um, other spices like uh, garam masala, which is a mix that uh, it, it almost smells like a gingerbread cookie. So okay. when you kind of throw spices that have a certain taste together, yes, it, it just, you know, enhances the dish. And it's all it's well, all natural. So you can modify it and you can even get children in the. Uh, there you go. Now I okay. had to keep my finger out the way. So just, you know. 
Came close once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes it easier is when you do have these nice tools. You're working Absolutely. with um, a nice Hankel knife that I had for years, and you know, it comes from the same city that the German tanks were made. So agree. <laughs> So. Well, the one thing I have learned about chefs, they carry their knives with them. Yes. It does not matter what it is. There you go. I keep mine right by my side. And uh. they keep them sharp. Otherwise, you can't do the business you do. Okay. Do I put the green stuff on top? Yes, we put the green stuff on top. All right. Dun, 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 dun. And we're going to stir it around to really just get the color and the flavors starting to uh, okay. mix. As a matter of fact, um, you can do a couple cut? of um, those round tomatoes right Cherry there. Cherry tomatoes? And if you will, I tell people to use a serenade knife on a fruit that basically has a, a cover like that. You'll, so, you'll basically see how that works better sometimes. Okay. Yes. So we'll yeah, start Yeah, you want season. me to cut these in? Uh, cut them like an eighth. See, yeah, just cut them down gotcha. really. So we're putting a little Chinese five spice there. A little cinnamon. I can do this. Little curry. Little dulse, which is the seaweed. Okay. I give it a little bit of salt taste with the. Uh, this is coconut amino, which is a. Um, like a healthy brand of soy sauce, but it comes from the coconut, okay. not soy based. Not soy based. And then um, all these flavors will come together. I did top it off with a little bit of olive oil, and I may need a little more, but technically the curry, all this right. dish is supposed to be orange when it's really done. All right, all let me get over there. here, get our taste tester over here. Who's taste testing today? Come on over, Teresa. Hello. Hey, hey, Hello. how are how you are doing? You? All right. Yes. You get to be part of the treat oh, for the day. My. We always grab somebody from somewhere to... Help us out here. A little more oil He's gonna put here. a little bit more soy sauce. Now this is the uh, extra version. All right. Olive oil, first cold press. We got about and 30 this. seconds here, so let's see. Let's go ahead and okay. dip her out some, and let's get a quick taste for that. I'm gonna let you do it for the for this this point. Okay. Dun, 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 so dun, the flavors dun, dun, are still dun. coming together, but you know you right. basically. Live Let me tell you, go and you can see Chef Live Ive and his bio on mm -hmm. our website at cefn.org. How's that, Teresa? This is delicious. Excellent. Such a different taste. So I knew it would be. You can eat the plantain roll, and it's basically healthy for you. So All right. this is one of well, the Well, we'll see you there. You can get this recipe there, cefn.org. Catch up with you then. Thank you very much.